Good morning. This morning reading is from John chapter 19. We've done three verses, verses 7 to 9, by the leading of the Holy Spirit and by God's guidance and protection and by the power of the Holy Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ this morning. Hallelujah. Verse 7 of John chapter 19. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Therefore, when Pilate heard it, or saying he was the more afraid, and went again into the praetorium, and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Jesus gave him no answer. Over in chapter 18 of verse 20 31 it says then Pilate said to him said to them the Jews you take him and judge him according to your law therefore the Jews said to him it is not lawful for us to put anyone to death <laughs> is there confusion here mm -hmm. because here in 31 of verse 18 they, they said it's not lawful but now they come in over in chapter 19 of verse 7 and they said the Jews answered according to all law he ought to die because he made himself son of God so why didn't they just go ahead and kill him and I believe here by the grace of the Old Spirit is that the simple fact is that they do not want the blood on they, they do not want his blood to be on their hand just in case he is who he said he is so they want to try and pass it on, and that's why there is a there is a, 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 a what you call a yo-yo type of tossing back and forth of him, because the Romans don't want to, don't want to kill him either because uh, Pilate don't find out nothing wrong with it. Pilate want to give him over to them, and they want to give him over. So there's a, a there's a politics or a game being played here with them because just in case no one wants that the fact of an innocent man's blood on their hand. But they are so determined in their art regardless to kill him. And the driving force behind all of this is because they don't like his teachings. His teachings is, uh, goes totally against their law because of the simple fact is that they identify, identify themselves as God's people and everyone else outside of them is Gentiles, dogs, you name it, you call them whatever they, they are just, they are not accepted. We are Gentiles, which means that we are not worthy to be to be called children of God. We are not, we are just not worthy. So the, the, the pride and the culture that is ingrained in them in such a way that for, for the, our Lord to come and teaching a, a gospel and a message that does not align with them, and for them, they do not want it. They do not want it. And then on top of it, people is believing in everything that our Lord is teaching. People is following him. And not only that, the power and the authority by which he's done everything, that he's doing everything, they have this fear now that they are being belittled. And they do not want it. The fame and the glory that is being accumulated here by what our Lord is teaching, this old thing they just want to get rid of him they just simply want to get rid of him because of out of a fear out of anxiety out of spiritual ignorance they simply have a drive to get rid of him so they plot they plan they deceive they lie they do everything that's why the lord called them and, and said to them you are of your father the devil which speaks to us to say there's a driving force behind them to kill him and the driving force is that of Satan, the devil, have them locked in because they give room to him to destroy him because they do not know or understand what is truth. And they have not lack spiritual insight into who the Lord Jesus Christ really is. Hallelujah. So this is the, the problem that's going on here. So this is the thing that's going on here. So now the Jews answer them, we have a law. And called to a law years to that because he made himself the son of God. Now, we know, thank God, too, we who live by faith and we who know the scriptures now, 
that we know that the Lord is who he is. He is the son of God. Yes, he is. It's the truth. And the truth, a lot of times, offends. It truly offends a lot of people when they hear the truth because of the way it is. But the truth, though it offends, it is only the flesh it offends, but it is good for our soul when we hear the truth of God's word in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen? So here we see that he said what he is. And because of lack of, because of there's no revelation from their father, because there's no revelation of the Holy Spirit to them, they believe in their mind that it is justifiable to kill him for that, just because the simple fact is that to say that you're a son of God, to them according to your law, is it's, it's an abomination. It's an abomination according to their law. So so they are simply saying to this that because of what he said and because who he said he is, kill him. Kill him. But Pilate said, no. So they, there's a juggling back and forth here with them as to who is going to be the one to throw the first stone or who is going to be the one to take the responsible for the, his blood. Hallelujah. But we know eventually he has to go to the cross. So the blood is going to be on every single one of us because it is for us he is going to die. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The verse 8. Therefore, when Pilate heard that saying, he was the more afraid. Pilate understands authority. So to hear that this man is the son of God, Pilate become more cautious now. Because the simple fact, he understands power. He understands authority. And the question becomes to Pilate now is that what if he really is? You know, he, he don't want to know that he take the responsibility of the blood of someone of such authority, of such magnitude of authority. No, he doesn't. So he was troubled. Maybe one of the senses saying that he was troubled, troubled in the sense of saying that maybe he felt himself that uh, this person had the authority to, to, to unseat him and rule over him. Who knows? But we'll find out. Because we know the Lord did not come at this time, at this moment in life. In the second coming, he is Lord of all. But he, for right now, he is a lamb. He is going to the cross on our behalf. Verse 9. And Pilate again went into the praetorium. This is the third time he went into the praetorium. Back and forth. And said to Jesus, where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Jesus gave him no answer. And why should he? The Lord have one thing on his mind, to go to that cross. He have us on his mind to go to that cross. His goal is that cross. Why should he answer? And if he answer, what will they, what will they do about it? Because he have to speak the truth. And the truth is that he is God in their midst. He is the son of God. I am. And the question would be like, what if he was to answer them and let them know truly who he is? Would that change the purpose and plan to go to the cross? What if he answered at that moment? Would it have shifted the whole the old authority and power of the Jews and Pilate, would, would th that moment be a moment in which it, what would have happened would be that Pilate and every one of them would have been destroyed? Because he is God. What if he did open up his mouth and answer? Because he has to speak the truth. He is the truth. So as far as I understand and concern about this, I am glad he did not open his mouth. There are a lot of times, beloved, we are in certain situations and circumstances. It's better to be silent than to open our mouth. <laughs> in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen? amen. Because a lot of times we open our mouth and we, get, we, we put ourselves deep in more trouble than anything else. Sometimes it is wise. It's a lesson here we can learn from the Lord. Sometimes it is wise when we in certain situations to just simply remain silent and let things work itself out. Because when things work itself out, everything goes according to God's glory. He did not answer Pilate. 
He didn't answer Pilate. Where are you from? Beloved, we this morning who is of Christ, we this morning who accept the Lord Jesus Christ in our heart in, in the, and become his children, we who can say we are a child of God, it is good this morning that when you said you're a child of God, you understand what it means. It means that now your citizenship is changed from earth to heaven. It means that if a one should ask you even this very question this morning, where are you from? Your answer shouldn't be that I am from Georgia. Your answer shouldn't be that you're from Jamaica. Your answer should be that you are from heaven. Mm -hmm. Because once you come to Christ, your citizenship has changed. You are now a child of the kingdom of heaven and no more of this earth. In this earth, we have now become alien. Our citizenship, according to Romans, is that we are now children of heaven. The Bible said we now sit and live in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus is in heaven upon the throne. We are with him. We are in God in heavenly places. We are now spiritual beings. We are not physical being no more. We are spiritual being in this physical body. So we as children of God, if this question should be put to us, we should have an answer to simply say, we are citizens of heaven. We are children of heaven. We are children of the living God because we walk by the Spirit. We live by the Spirit and we do everything in spirit and in truth because of the governing power of the Lord God by His power of His Holy Spirit upon our life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen? So we must understand this now. For us, we must know who we are, who we are, and where we are from. We have a new identity, and it is because of the Lord Jesus Christ. His death on the cross and us believing and accepting this work of grace upon the cross for our life and for our salvation. And because of our belief and our faith and believing what he did for us so that we can have eternal life, our citizenship has changed. We know where he's from. We too should know where we are from. If you say you're a child of God, may God bless you this morning as you walk in your identity and live a life in the Spirit and by the Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you.